Well, good morning. Isn't it great to be here on a Sabbath morning at the start of a new year? It's good to see you all, and it's great to see the number of visitors that we have here with us. Nice to see Merv and Joyce returned back to the mainland. They went to a little island off the coast of Australia, but it's nice to have you back with us. And uh, nice to see you with us too, Jenny, this morning. Just to let you know that next week we'll, our church will be opened. It'll be running on a very skeleton crew, but I'd like to say thank you to, to Lynn and Len who offered to run our services next week. And uh, so if anyone's uh, around town, p- please feel come and uh, welcome to come and fellowship with them next week. We um, thought, well, you've all had a good Christmas dinner. We don't need to have potluck today, do we? So uh, in, instead, we're going to have it a bit later in the month. I have had contact with Pastor Webster, our new minister. He's actually landed in New Zealand. He left uh, South Africa on Wednesday, and he's now in New Zealand with his family, and uh, they've been picked up by the conference members and are already down in the Turi Ridge area. On the, um, uh, he was just commenting too that he's been very busy right up until uh, leaving South Africa. He's been working uh, in connection with the Hope Channel Uh, doing a documentary on addiction for young people and also in regards to the Sabbath. So we're looking forward to this year um, working with Pastor Webster. And uh, the Holy Spirit never stops working, does he? Amen? The Holy Spirit never stops working, does he? Because he works constantly on the hearts of the ones who love him and just... This week, Mary and I were uh, in conversation with a friend of ours, and they too uh, have indicated that they'd like to get baptised. So, you know, the Holy Spirit is working continually. So, uh, praise the Lord that uh, we have many people who want to join the Remnant Church. 2010, we stand on the threshold of a new decade. And as we pondered on the step of the last decade, 2000, So do we again, but this time hopefully a bit more wiser and knowledgeable than then. You know, it's amazing how fast the last decade has gone. A new year has begun, and how have we begun it? Hopefully we started this year as we start each new day. With all the celebration of a new year, did we ask our Lord to guide and lead us through 2010? I hope so. What lies ahead of us for this year, we have no idea. You know, we have all these ideas and things that we'd like to accomplish, uh, maybe even complete from last year. Our children will be commencing most probably new schools and new activities. Um, And we begin to plan and have great purposes and eagerly, and yet, A lot of the time as we're planning and got our big spreadsheets up at work uh, and ticking off uh, what we want to achieve, we often leave Jesus out of the equation. If Jesus wasn't the center of your life last year, please make him the center this year starting today. Amen? As a child, the year never seemed to move forward. It just kind of dragged on. But... For me, the year was always highlighted because I had my birthday in the middle of the year, so there was always something to look forward to. Elderly folk would often state, the older you get, the faster it goes. I was hoping that this statement would have no truth in it, but unfortunately it has. At what age it commenced this temper, I am not sure, but at my young age now, it is confirmed that it just goes past pretty quick. And, you know, our comprehension of one year has a definition of being a considerably lengthy term, just by the sums, 365 days. Yeah, that's a long time, isn't it? Well, 52 weeks. Oh, yeah, that's a long time. When really speaking, it is only 12 months. I'll leave that with you. As a church, we in turn also begin to research what activities we will undertake. Fortunately, we have programs in place that will naturally roll over into this year. Plans have also been discussed for work in certain new areas amongst different members. But this year, 2010, 
is by all means much more important than 2009. Amen? Along with all the previous years, and especially 2009, our foundation for community outreach has been cemented. But again, 2010 will be and must be more important for us than 2009, and here's why. I've actually taken the liberty this morning of uh, referring to paragraphs from the spirit of prophecy and for this purpose from chapter 7 of Patriarchs and Prophets based on the uh, books of Genesis 6 and 7. And it says here, Mrs. White starts to write, she said, amid the prevailing corruption, Methuselah, Noah and many others laboured to keep alive the knowledge of the true God and to stay the tide of moral evil. This statement is referring to nearly 6,000 years ago, and today, this year, it is, exactly, is, it, it is sorry, exactly the same statement. It reads simply like this. Amid the prevailing corruption, the members of the Wangare Seventh-day Adventist Church and many others labour to keep alive the knowledge of the true God and to stay the tide of moral evil. The tide of moral evil laps the steps of the church. Our job, commission, is to keep alive the knowledge of the true God, a knowledge that the true God is a God of love, patience, merciful, forgiving, and willing to save those who freely come to him, rewarding them that diligently seek him, committing their lives fully to him. This message that Methuselah, Noah, and many others laboured to keep alive is the same as our three angels' message found in Revelation 14, 6. Calling people back to the knowledge of the true God. There are so many beliefs and so many misinterpretations and so many things happening out there that people are being literally led astray and unfortunately to their own eternal destruction. That is why we have to realise how important 2010 is for each and every one of us. 120 years before the flood, the Lord by a holy angel declared to Noah his purpose and directed him to build an ark. While building the ark, he was to preach that God would bring a flood of water upon the earth to destroy the wicked. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ gave us his ark, the church, to carry us through and for us to call a people to repentance. Those who would believe the message and would prepare for that event by repentance and reformation should find pardon and be saved. Those who would believe the gospel message and would prepare for that event, the second coming, by repentance and reformation should find pardon and be saved. Enoch had repeated to his children what God had shown him in regards to the flood and what, would, what was about to take place. And Methuselah and his sons, who lived to hear the preaching of Noah, assisted in building the ark. Today, the apostles and church founders have assisted in building the church and preached about how God did lead in the past. By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which, which is, excuse me, by faith found in Hebrews 11, 7. By faith, we have also accepted the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and received his righteousness through faith. While Noah was given, giving his warning message to the world, his works testified of his sincerity. While we were giving the warning message to the world, our works also testified of our sincerity. 2010, we have to be sincere about presenting God's word to this world. It was thus that his faith was perfected and made evident he gave the world an example of believing that uh, believing just what God says. 
It was thus that our faith was perfected and made evident. We gave the world an example, or we give the world an example of believing just what God says. All that he possessed, he invested in the ark as he began to construct that immense boat on dry ground. Multitudes came from every direction to see the strange sight and to hear the earnest, fervent words of the single or singular preacher. Every blow struck upon the ark was a witness to the people. Can you imagine that? Suddenly in, the, in an area that was uh, relatively flat, full of vegetation, and then you see these trees starting to fall and this boat starting to be built, and people were wondering why. It's never rained. Why do we need a boat? All that we possess is personal sacrifices of gifts and time. We also invest in the church. This next paragraph can be Wangarei, any New Zealand city or country of the world. We only have to replace one word. The paragraph starts off with, Many at first appeared to receive the warning, but they did not turn to God with true repentance. They were willing to renounce their sins during the time that elapsed before the coming of the flood. What word do we change here? Before the coming of the Lord. Their faith was tested and they failed to endure the trial. Overcome by the <coughs> prevailing <coughs> excuse me, unbelief, they finally joined their former associates in rejecting the solemn message. Some were deeply confused convicted and could have heeded the words of warning, but there were so many to jest and ridicule that they partook of the same spirit, resisted the invitations of mercy, and were soon among the boldest and mo most defiant scoffers. For none are so reckless and go to such lengths in sin as do those who once have had light but have resisted the convicting spirit of God. Isn't that the same picture of what's happening around us today? The world, you know, we happen to be um, at home just looking at the news and as we were watching the news, there were undertitles coming through of wars in six different countries. Um, started last year, but some only this year too. The world is in a terrible place and the Jesus needs to come. There are people that have heard the message, but because of criticism amongst their own families or friends or workplaces, they've left it. The period of their probation was about to expire. Noah had faithfully followed the instructions which he had received from God. In regards to us, the members had faithfully followed the instructions which they had received from God. The ark was finished in every part as the Lord had directed and was stored with food for man and beast. And now the servant of God made his last solemn appeal to the people. With an agony of desire that words cannot express, he entreated them to seek a refuge while it might be found. Is that our position too? Are we agonizing with a desire of love for the peoples in our families and our towns and our workplace? Are we agonizing for them too that they can have part in the plan of salvation? with an agony of desire of love for the people around us, that we entreated them to seek refuge in Jesus while he still may be found. Again, they rejected his words and raised their voices in jest and scoffing. Suddenly a silence fell upon the mocking throng. Beast of every description, the fiercest as well as the most gentle were seen coming from mountain and forest and quietly making their way toward the ark. A noise as of a rushing wind was heard, and low birds were flocking from all directions, their numbers darkening the heavens, and in perfect order they passed to the ark. Animals obeyed the command of God, while men were disobedient. Guided by holy angels, they went into and to, uh, unto Noah, into the ark, and the clean beast by sevens. And it simply goes on to say in... in uh, the patriarchs and prophets, the world looked on in wonder, some in fear. Wouldn't we too look in wonder if we saw suddenly all the animals moving in one direction? Suddenly the clouds are dark, the skies are darkened by the flocks of birds, and they just stood in wonder and forgotten already the 120 years of preaching by Noah.
Noah had preached for 120 years and they still couldn't, would not see that this miracle that was taking place before their eyes was from the God of heaven, the God of creation, the God of salvation. But men had become so hardened by their persistent rejection of light that even this scene produced but a momentary impression. Sad, so very sad. As the doomed race beheld the sun shining in its glory and the earth clad in almost Eden beauty, they banished their rising fears by boisterous merriment and by their deeds of violence. They seemed to invite upon themselves the visitation of the already awakened wrath of God. God commanded Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen. Righteous before me in this generation, Noah's warning had been rejected by the world, but his influence and example resulted in blessings to his family. As a reward for his faithfulness and integrity, God saved all the members of his family with him. What encouragement to parental fidelity. God commanded saints, Come now in all thy house into the house of the Lord, for thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. That is what we want to hear from our Lord too, isn't it? Mercy had ceased its pleading for the guilty race. The beasts of the fields and the birds of the air had entered the place of refuge. Noah and his household were within the ark, and the Lord shut him in. A flash of dazzling light was seen and a cloud of glory more vivid than the lightning descended from heaven and hovered before the entrance of the ark. The massive door which, was, which it was impossible for those within to close was slowly swung to its place by unseen hands. Noah was shut in and the rejectors of God mercy, mercy were shut out. <clears throat> the seal of heaven was on that door God had shut it and God alone could open it. So when Christ shall cease his intercession for guilty men before his coming in the clouds of heaven, the door of mercy will be shut. When divine grace will no longer restrain the wicked and Satan will have full control of those who have rejected mercy, they will endeavor to destroy God's people. But as Noah was shot into, shut into the ark, so the righteous will be shielded by the divine power of God. Isn't that a wonderful promise? And it's about to happen. It's not long now hence before the mercy uh, probation side of time is finished and uh, God's mercy will cease for this generation. But we have a wonderful Lord and Saviour who's promised that he will be our, our shield when that time comes. Matthew 24 37 states, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, up until the day Noah entered the ark. It must have been pretty bad back then because it is pretty bad on the world today. You know, again, when we watch TV, we just see it all the time. Our newspapers are filled of what it was like, uh, what it's like today. And if it was that bad back then, how much worse does it have to get today? The message for 2010 is the same as it has been for 6,000 years. To bring to the attention of those the knowledge of the true God, the true God of heaven, and the wonderful gift that he gave in Jesus Christ. But there is a difference. The message, even though it's the same, there is a difference, and that is the urgency of how we present it. That is the most important part. Do not let your hearts become cold to those who share your, li your lives with, but let the fire of love kindled only be by the Holy Spirit convict you to take the gospel to all of them and please start with someone, either in your neighbourhood or in your family. The spiritual life of the church is written in the Signs of the Time on December 1899 by Sister White says, The spiritual life of the church can be kept alive only as members make personal efforts to win the souls to Christ. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, if we could all just talk to, uh, turn to that, please. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and it says, But ye are a chosen generation, 
a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a ho and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should fo show forth the praises of them who have called you, of him, sorry, who have called you out of darkness into this marvellous light. We are a chosen generation for this time on earth. We are a priesthood to bring the knowledge of the true God to the people around us. We are a holy nation, and we are a peculiar people or a purchased people, that he should show forth the praises of God. That's our job, to show the praises of God to those around us. That is our commission, who has called you out of darkness into this wonderful, marvellous light, and that he has. That is the good news, that a miracle has taken place in our lives, taken from darkness into his marvellous light. His light is pure, wonderful, and marvellous. Wouldn't you just want to go and tell others about the miracle that's taken place in your lives? You tell them about trivial matters, and yet one thing that offers hope, hope eternal, eternal life, we omit. You know, let's just turn to the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 14, verse 6. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, and it says, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach, and unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made heaven and earth the sea, and the fountains of water. That is our message for 2010. But it's not one that we just mention occasionally, it's one that should be on our lips continually. If you love God that much, and you love your neighbours that much, that's the message that we have to bring to them. So in 2010, please let us go forth and, pr and show the world the praise of the one who not only saved the world, but also loves us very much. And I'd like you to do that in his name, and wish you... All the very best of God's blessings as we go forth in 2010. And may he bless all our activities. Amen. We just pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will walk with us as we go out um, into this new year that on a daily basis, Lord, we can ask for his anointing and his blessing. Father, we thank you too that we can study the fruits of the Spirit this, this quarter and just realize, Lord, how important it is for us to have your Holy Spirit. Be with each and every one of us now, Lord, and we pray that uh, you'll bless those who travel to camp, give them traveling mercies, and may, Lord, your Spirit uh, have a message for each and every one of, us, one of us there too, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.